Good day, Kafibal, and welcome to our Learn at Home Facebook Live. For the discussion today, the topic will be on Classroom Action Research, Revisiting the Process. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibalgroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Share the video using hashtag LearnAs1PH as our official hashtag to all our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this evening, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Carlos A. Buraga graduated cum laude from Isabella State University, Cabagan Campus with a degree Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English. He finished his master's degree in education at University of Makati. In 2018, he pursued his Doctor of Philosophy in English Language Teaching at Metropolitan College. He also finished Doctor of Education in Innovative Education Management at University of Makati in 2021. He has been teaching for 10 years in Makari High School as an English teacher. He is also currently assigned as the language coordinator for the senior high school department in the same school. He believes that, the, he believes that our dreams do come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Carlos A. Boraga. Thank you so much, Ms. Jillian, for that introduction. Again, good evening, Kavibal. Good evening, teachers, parents, and to all our viewers who are watching right now via Vibal's Facebook page. Magandang gabi po sa lahat, and welcome again to another Learn at Home session. Again, uh, Vibal, thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to share something to our audience this evening. And our topic is very interesting. Uh, this evening as we will revisit what classroom action research is with this discussion that i'm going to present to you right now you will realize that research is not really that difficult to conduct but before introducing to you what action research is let me present to you first the outline of our presentation this evening so I'll present to you the legal basis of why we are conducting research in the Department of Education, after which I will present some definitions of, of action research and its different types. And we will revisit the different processes and format of an action research. So based on the Republic Act 9155, the Basic Education Act, it says there under Chapter 1, Section 5, that the Department of Education shall have authority, accountability, and responsibility for the following. So Section 5 states there the National Educational Research and Studies. So binaba po yan ng Department of Education through different memorandum and orders. And one of these is the TEPED order number 13, series of 2015, the policy development process, where it says there that in doing policies in the Department of Education, it should be systematic, it should be participatory, and at the same time, it should be evidence-based. So doing an action research is participatory. We cannot just do it by own self, but it requires it, it requires what uh, respondents, and this should also be systematic because as we go on with our research, we should have our what we call research plan. Under DepEd Order Thirty Nine Series of Twenty Sixteen, uh, this is still under the policy support of the DepEd. This DEPET order aims to uh, give us the basic education research agenda. And these are the themes and sub themes of the researches that we'll be conducting. And conducting, in, uh, conducting research in a DEPED 
or the Department of Education is not only confined with the teacher, you know, even the non-teaching personnel are, are also encouraged to conduct a research. So the first one is teaching and learning. So this one focuses about classroom instruction. So it's, it's, it's all about the, uh, it's all about curriculum. Next is child protection. In particular, Podito involve ang uh, mga classroom advisors, uh, guidance advocates, and the child protection committees pumpaso po dito. Next is uh, human resource development. With human resource development, normally ito po ay nasa non teaching, but for the teachers, if you are involved in the human resource development actions of your school, kasama po kayo sa, sa school board at may nakikita po kayo na something to be improved sa inyong, for example, processes. Gusto ninyong tignan ang problema at bigyan ng solution, right? And of course, uh, governance. Kasama po dito yung school operations. So kung kasama po kayo sa um, school planning uh, team ng school um, council, you are also welcome to make an action research for your school under this step ed order number 39. So again, these are the themes and sub themes po the, na, <clears throat> under basic education research agenda. It could also be about gender and development. Pwede rin po yung about uh, disaster risk reduction and management and also inclusive education. So we could also conduct uh, research sa SPED or uh, special education. With regard to the DEPED order number 16 series of 2017, ito po yung tinutukoy na pinaka Bible ng uh, research sa Department of Education because what it tells us the research management guidelines and you can find the legal basis and policy support of doing the uh the the research management the milestones in research management its policy objectives the research uh management cycle fund uh sources and other special provisions so in this depth order there are examples given here like uh, research questions, uh, research topics, which you can consider in designing your research later on. So let's proceed now to what action research is. Okay, um, Coined by Kurt Lewin in 1944 to describe a process of investigation and inquiry that occurs as action is taken to solve a problem. So action research is a process. This cannot just be done overnight. You know, it involves it involves a process. Okay. And it it is also a practice of reflective inquiry undertaken with the the goal in improving understanding and practice. Action refers to the change you are trying to implement, and research refers to your improved understanding of the learning environment. This is especially for the teachers, you know, doing an action research is not purely theoretical. You know, it's, it's not purely conceptual, but rather what we use in the action research is the reflective approach. You can, you can actually do action research without, without going to the library or reading a number of books or articles or browsing a number of websites. In doing an action research later on, you will realize uh, that it is possible that even when you are in the school, you can do your action research. Sometimes, sometimes because we have these misconceptions that our action research should be successful. No, kailangan, na, kailangan pag nag, for example, kailangan pag nag pre-test ako, kailangan pagdating ng post-test, mataas yung score ng mga bata. You know, if, if the research did not become productive or did not achieve a positive output, there must be a reason. And the reason might 
be another reason for you to come up with another research. But remember, just because you failed doesn't mean you are a failure. Okay? In doing action research, it will improve, you know, it will improve our practice. So research is a spiraling cycle. Basically, we will start with the problem identification. Then after that, um, or after identifying the problem, then you begin to conceptualize the possible solutions that you can do to address the problem. And next is the systematic data collection. Now, this one is a long process. Here, it is also important to to, to, to know the difference between basic uh, research, research and action research. So what is the difference between these two? Um, um, basic research kasi is just, if you want, if you just want to, to try to know the cause of the problem, so when a researcher would just like to know the reason behind the occurrence or the problem, basic lang po yun, right? So yun nakikita natin na, na for example, those who are floating questionnaires or survey questionnaires, gonna push. But if you will be doing an action research, you have identified the problem through data. For example, yung um, scores sa mga bata in, in the test were very low. The, the, the reading comprehension of the students is very poor. You have also identified the problem through interview through observation then after gathering the data you will think of the possible strategy or intervention so what what i'm trying to say is that your basic research is just one way okay so you just look cause then you just present it in action research aside from getting the cause of the problem from getting the the background of the problem kailang merkong gagawin all right that there should be an action ano ano yung gagawin mo bilang researcher right so that is uh an action research and then after that it will go through reflection um analysis data driven action taken and problem redefinition one thing also why we call it um, cyclical because we have problem redefin uh, redefinition. Most of the time, kasi kung ano yung problem natin, uh, yung problem kung ano yung problema natin sa umpisa sa dulo ng research na address natin yung problema na na yun, then naka come up na naman ng panibagong problema, right? So it's it's a um, uh, cyclical. Okay, it is also a method of trying out ideas in practice as a means of increasing knowledge about or improving curriculum teaching and learning. It is a process in which participants examine their own educational practice systematically and carefully using the techniques of research. Yung ginagawa po natin sa klase natin when, when, when we put things that we do in our classroom systematically and carefully using the techniques of research so we can come up with our own action research right ang problema po kasi sa classroom natin uh and dami natin ginagawa pero hindi natin dino document or we do not document what we are doing in 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 our classroom right but if we just try to document everything we will come up with our action research at the end of just six months, right? The, it, it, yan po yung time frame ng paggawa ng action research. It's actually just six months. For example, uh, first quarter will be having the problem identification. Then second quarter will have the implementation of the action. Kasama na po yung writings, uh, etc. So minimum is three months and maximum of six months for basic research that's actually a maximum of one year, right? So again, if we will just document everything that we do inside the classroom, we can actually come up with our own action research.
So these are the types of action research. Um, the first one is classroom action research. Kapag ang tema ay nasa classroom lang, right? It can also be collaborative. Kapag merong dalawa o tatlong teachers uh, na nag-go work, right? However, uh, if if there are more than two teachers who are working sa who are involved sa paggawa ng research, be sure that the involvement of each member ay nasa action part ng, ng, ng research. Hindi yung isa, for example, uh, grammarian o isa naman is a statistician. No, that's, that's, that's actually a wrong practice, right? Everyone should be involved in, in doing uh, the, the research. The next one is school-wide research. If, if two or more grade levels are involved, district-wide uh, research, if two uh, schools in the district are involved, we also have division-wide research. Kapag dalawang schools sa bawat distrito, for example, two schools in the district one and two schools in the district two. Why do I have to discuss this? Because uh, in the promotion and selection board, iba yung points ng point system Nang, for example, if you do school-based research or division-wide or district-wide research. Now, if you want to have your promotion later on, you have to have an action research because, research because that is uh, part of the, the, the point system. Action research process. Um, there are three approaches in doing an action research. The first one is the reflective approach. It's it's actually an approach wherein your write-ups are coming from your reflections, right? Scholarly approach. These are from the interviews, from what you have read in the books, in the internet, or in the uh, other sources. Design thinking approach. These are the strategies na ginagawa natin. These are our innovations. You know, sometimes inside the classroom, meron tayong nagagawa na strategies na, na maganda palang gawin, na nakakatulong pala sa mga students natin, for example. Um, so, so these are the activities na pwede natin gawin, right? So the combination of these is a good action research. Hindi lang puro survey, hindi lang puro interview, right? Para buo at maganda ang inyong action research. Meron uh, ganitong approaches, right? So you can actually uh, make use of reflective, uh, scholarly, and design thinking approach. So these are the three approaches that we can actually use in doing an action research. These are the eight M's of teaching and learning. So dito daw po pwede manggali yung mga topics natin in doing and action research. So we have milieu, uh, matter, motivation, method, material, media, measurement, and uh, mastery. So sa walong M na po iyan, umiikot po ang mga problema natin sa classroom. So kapag may problem po kayo dito sa walong M, Pwede po nating gawa ng isang magandang action uh, research. But the question is, ano ba ang mga bahagi ng, ng uh, isang action research? Now, probably most of you are asking or kung alam man, nakalimutan na natin yung mga different parts of uh, an action research. Okay, what I'll be sharing you later on on uh, the different parts of an action research is based on the DepEd order number 16, series of 2017. Hindi na po ito yung parang thesis or uh, dissertation. All right, again, so uh, sa walong M na po ito umikot yung mga problems natin sa classroom. So if you have if you encounter one problem among these uh, eight M's, you can develop and conduct an action research. All right, the point you need to call kanina na different parts of action research. But before that, uh, one problem also 
ng mga teachers o ng mga researchers is how how do we craft our title or our research titles? Yeah, but that's the first thing that we have to to uh, to make first, right? Or to identify first. Um, there are only three things that we need to consider in crafting our research title. Sa title pa lang, dapat nandun na yung problem. Dapat nandun na yung participants. Dapat nandun na yung solution doon sa problema. So, three, three things that we have to consider in crafting our title. First, the, the, uh, what, what the problem is all about. Second one is who will be the participants of your uh, research and the pro uh, and the solution to that problem. All right. So uh, these are the different parts of a national research. The first one is, as you can see, the first one is the the rationale. Na binubo po ng dalawa ang una po ay context at ang pangalawa ay innovation, intervention, and strategy. Ang context po is it, it is just a discussion of your situation in your classroom and your and and your task. So, nakita mo yung situation mo sa class ngayon, ano yung gagawin mo? All right, that 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 is just the 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 context, okay? Ang isang action research po ay hindi matter ng pakapalan. All right, as you can see here from part 1 to part 4, you know, actually it's just it is just a maximum of 15 pages. Okay? Kung, kung dadami man yung, yung pages, maybe dahil marami po kayong reflections na ilalagay or marami po kayong ilalagay na, na appendices. Alright? But it is just a maximum of 15 pages. Again, hindi, it, it's, not, it's, it's not a matter of pakapalan. Right, in the Indian item uh, thesis or dissertation, it's it's an action research. The next one is innovation, uh, intervention, strategy. Mamimili lang po kayo kung ano yung action nagagawin po ninyo. Is it an innovation? Is it an intervention? Uh, or is it a strategy? Kung innovation po yan, there should be a design. And that will be put in the appendix part. Kung intervention po, uh, there should be a plan. All right. If it is a strategy, I guess that that should be present in your lesson plan. All right. Ulit ko lang po. Kung innovation, there should be a design. Kung intervention, there should be a plan. Kung strategy, that that should be present in your lesson plan, and these should be. Uh, present, uh, this should be presented in your um, appendices or in your appendix later on, right? The next one is action research question. Normally, an action research question starts with how does, all right, then solution, um, improve the, for example, how does, uh, then you put the solution, improve the, then you have the, the problem of grade anong level kung sino magiging participants so normally ganun lang po yung paggawa ng ng action research question natin then we have we have follow up questions all right uh, the next one is action research method let's 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 actually not make it more complicated in in crafting our action research questions all right one question is fine, all right? Kung meron mang idadagdag na questions sa inyo action research, maybe yun lang ang uh, supporting questions or follow-up questions, all right? The next one is action research methods. Um, tatlo lang po yan. We have participants and other sources of data. Yan ba ay manggagaling sa interview, uh, sa observation, or manggagaling ba ang data mo sa scores sa mga bata? Sa grade ng mga bata sa card. All right, this is the first one. The next one is data gathering methods. Um, how are you going to gather your data? Is it through a survey? Is it through an interview? Will you be conducting a focus group discussion? 
right? And third one is data analysis. How are you going to analyze your data? Dito kasi we, we actually cannot avoid uh, to make use of statistical tools. So pwede mong sabihin na uh, here you'll be using frequency distribution, um, percentage, and other statistical tools that you can uh, use to analyze your data later on. Okay, the next one is part four. We have results and reflection. Ang results lang naman po ay sasagutin po ang mga resource questions. This this will answer just uh, your, this will just answer your resource questions. Kung ilan ang tanong, yun lang din naman po ang results. Right, so for example, if you have one resource question, uh, you should have one result. Right. If you have two research uh, research questions, you should have two results. All right. Then you come up with a reflection from each uh, result. It it it's it's actually like findings and recommendations. Noong tayo gumagawa ng thesis or dissertation. Part five is the work plan and timeline uh, timelines. Kailan po kayo start ng problem identification? Kailan po ginawa ang research? Uh, when did you start writing your manuscript? When did you finish uh, writing your uh, final manuscript? Okay, yan po yung ilalagay natin. Again, normally our timeline of doing an action research is just a matter of six months. Okay, action research, six months. Kung basic research, it's maximum of one year. The, the, the remaining six months will be allotted for maybe um, dissemination all right kung for example if you will join a a, a resource festival or if you will um, be part of yung yung lack session natin you can actually disseminate the the res results of your action research okay kung meron kayong uh, in service training Okay, then the next one is we have the cost uh, estimates, yung mga nagas po sa pagconduct ng research. Um, why is this important? Because we, di ba, meron tayong scholarship na binibigay, so pwede natin ilagay doon kung ano yung, kung anong, kung um, anong exact amount ang nagastos natin sa paggawa ng ating research references uh, section. APA format is used in terms of writing the references. This is also one way of safeguarding our images as researchers in plagiarism act. So we, lahat po ng mga nailagay po natin sa ating research, kailangan po natin ilagay, right, uh, the information that we have included in our research, in our paper should be also included in the the, the references section para maiwasan po natin yung tinatawag po natin plagiarism. All right, and the last part is appendix or uh, appendices. This this will support the entirety of your action research. So basically, these are the the basic parts. These are the parts of an action. Uh, research, okay, we have the rationale, um, action re research questions, action research methods, um, results and reflection, work plan and timelines, uh, cost estimates, and references, appendix or appendices. So again, it's, it's actually not difficult to write an action research. If I, we we just have to follow by just following these parts makagagawa na tayo ng isang magandang action uh, research ang pagsasaliksik ay parte din ng ating buhay this one is very true no uh, research is research is part of our everyday life okay as teacher pag Pag meron tayong sujanting late sa ating klase, all right? When 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 our students get late, all right? Tinatanong na natin kung bakit sila late. That's that's already a research. So parte na po yan ng ating buhay bilang guro, parte na po yan ng ating uh, everyday life, 
right? And research is very important. And that ends my presentation. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Learn with Teacher Carlos. And before I end my presentation, I would just like to greet all my colleagues in Makati High School, my bosses in uh, SDO Makati, and to my family in Kabagan Isabella who are watching right now. Again, um, teachers with this presentation that I have sh uh, shared to you, I believe that you know you can come up with a good action research. Okay, kailang isama natin yung sa bucket list natin. You know, when I had, when I finished my master's degree, I told myself, sinama ko sa bucket list ko na dapat at least one uh, year makagawa ko ng isang kahit isang action research man lamang. So, uh, thankfully, um, for sa loob ng apat na taon, nakagawa na ako ng apat na, na action researches. At kung nakaya ko pong gumawa ng isang action research, I believe that you can also do all right, uh, a good action research. So, you just have to follow. At least, meron tayong um, parang basis, right? Meron tayong format. And we just have to you know, you mga practices po na ginagawa natin sa classroom, yung mga different strategies, yung mga approaches na ginagawa natin sa, sa classroom, we can, we, we can actually document these, all right, and come up with a good action research. Again, thank you so much, Vibal, and to all our viewers who are, um, are watching. Have a blessed evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Ms. Jillian. There we have it. In behalf of Mibal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for today for this very eye-opening and insightful learning session. It is an honor to have you with us today, sir. And to all our Kavibal viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to all our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. The link is in the caption of this webinar. We also encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Vivo Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat.